Well, our readers will remember that um, going into 2019, um, you know, our outlook was, um, you know, overall a little bit more conservative. And um, uh, our readers will remember back in 2019, January, um, investors were looking, um, you know, at a market environment with central banks, you know, continuing to normalize monetary policy. So the expectations going into 2019 were that we would see a string of interest rate hikes and um, a normalization of those policies. And we became, during the year, we became more and more um, you know, negative on the outlook for the global economy and then um, really questioned whether this normalization of monetary policies would indeed take place. Now, um, almost at the year end 2019, <clears throat> we're seeing that um, we're in a completely different situation. In the meantime, central banks have reversed their course. Um, in fact, we've seen the first um, interest rate cuts in the US. And there's even more talk about um, you know, further stimulus and quantitative easing. So I think the situation now looks very different to um, the way it looked in back in January 2019. And obviously with that, with far-reaching um, implications for investors going into, two, into 2020. Yeah, well, what's, um, what's the situation today, um, November 2019? I think um, looking at the fundamentals, we're looking at the pretty broad-based slowdown in the world economy. Um, and with that, obviously, a pressure on corporate earnings going into 2020. And in fact, earnings expect expectations have been revised so much um, over the past few months that the expectations are relatively low going into 2020. But um, there is no doubt we have um, declining fundamentals um, in the world economy. Um, and a lot of that obviously, you know, is related to global uncertainty coming from things like the trade tensions, China, US, coming from things like, you know, Brexit and, you know, plenty of other little question marks out there. So I think it's just important, you know, to realize that the fundamentals are not looking that great. Yeah, there is hope for sure, you know, as well. But I think investors need to be um, somewhat careful going into 2020. Yeah, I mean, trade tensions have been kind of hanging over our heads now for you know quite a long time, and um, they've certainly had a negative impact on um, the, the 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 market environment. Um, I think in recent weeks there is a somewhat slightly more bullish tone um, to the whole trade talk, and um, I think there is now reasons to believe that we're going to see some kind of um, you know, trade deal, um, this might only be temporary, but I think we're going to have some sort of a deal between the US and China. And um, no question about that. But in short term, I think it would be a pretty bullish sign for the market. Um, it would basically give kind of, uh, you know, give, the, give everything a little bit more hope going into 2020. Um, but even without the trade deal, this might be important from a psychological point of view. We're still dealing with an overall, the you know, situation of declining fundamentals, and we first need to see these economic fundamentals and indicators turning more bullish again, until I think we um, have a bit of a better long-term outlook. So I think investors need to understand this. They need to understand where we stand in the overall picture, and they also need to understand um, what's important going into 2020. That means, yeah, you probably want to be and stay invested. But then at the same time, while you're being invested, I think you also want to make sure that you hedge your bets to the downside because um, 2020 has still the potential to, be, to, to, to actually be you know, rather negative. So you don't want to kind of you know, just be out there hoping that things will turn out OK. I think you really need to um, investors need to prepare for that uncertainty. They need to know where we stand in the cycle. And that means also um, understanding what sectors you know tend to outperform at this current um, point in the cycle i think this is um, crucial for investors going into 2020